get started on new collection because I haven't put out a new collection since my holiday collection, which is kind of questionable as a small business owner. <laughs> I also haven't posted on Instagram, haven't posted on TikTok. I've been fully neglecting my small business, which is understandable given that I am planning a wedding, making my wedding dress, sewing clothes for myself, making all my bachelorette clothes, making all my honeymoon clothes. But nonetheless, I still consider my small business a big priority of mine. So we're gonna get back into it with the first collection of 2024 and I'm very excited about it. I have too many ideas, honestly, and I've kind of narrowed it down in my head to what I think will be manageable, but you know me. I just, I overestimate the time and energy that I end up having. But something that is a must have, for this first collection. Let me show you. The Vine Vita Fruit Loops fragrance oil mixed with a couple other things to make it my own, but this is going to be the very first item in my nostalgia collection. I've been freaking talking about <laughs> this nostalgia candle collection for so many months at this point, and I'm finally doing it. We're doing it, guys. It's it's happening. I want to call it like cereal milk and vanilla something, like vanilla berries or frosted berries you know something of that sort that kind of reminds you of like your childhood cereals that you might have had the sugary cereal mixed with the milk with all the colors i actually already mocked up a label i'll put it here that's kind of what i'm thinking of it's like a very playful like childish but nostalgic and very still like aesthetic um type of label and then here's my real dilemma i am considering knocking out one of the two colors that I have for my candles. Let me show you what I currently have. All right, if you guys know, you know, but I have multiple different sizes of my candles. This is the cream color that I've been using since the very beginning. These are all from Makesy, and I like the cream, but they recently came out with an ivory, so I'm considering switching this to an ivory because sometimes, gosh, sometimes I feel like this color is kind of dull, but let me know what you think. I'll, I'll show you the comparison in a bit. And then this is the black color that I use. They're both the same type of Ara jar. The black one gets fingerprints on it all the time. So I'm considering not having this, but I know some people like my black containers because it's kind of unique. I don't know. But here is the new, well, this one's the new one. This is now called Ivory Matte, and this is called Cream Matte, or Matte Cream Matte Ivory. And there's ever so subtly a difference <laughs> this one's a little brighter and lighter this one's a little bit more grayish and this is the one i currently use because this is what they offered for the longest time but recently they started offering these so i just ordered a sample of the minis of these to see the color before committing to the big sizes but let me know what you think would it be worth switching over to these let me know and then other than the cereal fragrance oil i also want to use this orange creamsicle i think there's like a really big smudge on my camera right now anyway there's this orange creamsicle fragrance oil that just launched from candle science i ordered a um sample of it hopefully that comes in the next couple days so i can show you guys in this video but that would be so nostalgic if i can create an orange creamsicle scented candle maybe mixed with some other things like other summery type scents because i always like to mix things in with just the original fragrance that i'm using to kind of make it my own and make it so that like you can't really get it anywhere other than my shop those are the two new candles that i'm thinking of I'm very pumped for those well other than that i have a few other things in mind pouches oh i am always so optimistic about pouches i'm thinking about making like 12 new pouches oh my gosh i do have this new walking foot which is supposed to help with the fact that it's really hard to get the really big interfacing like quilting interfacing um along with like four layers of fabric under my um regular uh presser foot presser foot yeah that's what it's called um i heard this walking foot supposed to help i have no idea how to use this and it looks massive and it comes with like other things like what 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 the heck is this thing and how do i use that i don't know but if i figure out how to do that it might be easier to make pouches and then i was also thinking making something simple that are similar to pouches but are like 2d so they're not like those 3d puffed up pouches which would eliminate that last annoying part of pouches where i like puff it up a little bit by cornering out the edges <sighs> We'll see, man. But I know I just got right into it because I'm very excited to start these. I think I'm going to make these candles probably tomorrow. I just wanted to like talk about them because I was very excited. And these just smell so good and I've had them for such a long time where like the, this fragrance where I just smell it every once in a while. Oh, 
It smells so good. You need to smell this, guys. If you've never ordered a candle from me and you're considering ordering one, well, obviously, I would ask you to get the sandalwood musk and high tide candle because that's the one everyone loves so like i'm very confident in that scent but if you want to wait for this one i'm thinking of a launch date for this collection could be end of february even though i do have a lot of like valentine's type things that are going to be in this collection i'm pretty sure but it's it's already february 2nd i'm not going to be able to come out with it <laughs> by the 14th. Anyway, how are your guys' first collections of the year? Did you launch anything? I feel like it's so hard to get the first collection out in the year because it involves doing a good amount of work in January and December to like prep for the first launch of the year. And I just, I never have that in me. So I, I just keep smelling the Fruit Loops fragrance and it's like doing something to me. It's so good. One more announcement. Um, I am going to be, oh God, it's so bright. How do I escape? How do I get out of here? I am going to launch these Teddy pillar candles. So cute. I actually already launched them on my Etsy because I did an Etsy glow up. If you haven't seen that video, I will put it here. But I launched these as well as this cherub candle, which I've had on my site and at pop-ups before, but I've had it out of stock for a while. I might've even archived it on Shopify, but this one is so cute. It's like a cute little piece of decor. I think it's like kind of a timeless aesthetic thing that kind of came back but never really went away. I had those too. I also have another teddy mold that I want to put online. I have to look through my stash, which I keep down here, of my candle molds to see what else I can make. Because I know I have a lot of Christmassy ones, but it's too late <laughs> to do Christmas, obviously. All right, I know I'm really chatty today. It's really wild, but I do want to show you some things I got from Mixi. Sorry, I couldn't wait for you guys to open it because I was really excited. And I really wanted to see these 2.5 Aura Vessel Matte Ivories. I already show them too, but look at it not next to the beige one. It seems bright and I really like it. Does it look exactly the same as the beige one though? Ugh. This is so difficult because the beige one, even before this ivory one came out, I was like, it looks kind of dirty. Like I wish it weren't exactly white, but like somewhere in between the cream and the white, which I think is ivory low key. I think I should switch to these. Mm. All right, well, I have a 12 pack of that. Maybe I'll fill it and put some candle labels on it. If I end up not going with these, I'll just sell these at pop shops and it'll be no big deal. But I kind of want to go with them. that was crazy life hack guys or small business shipping hack keep all of that extra paper stashed away somewhere and then you can use that for shipping out your own like shipments for your customers because that was all free it just came with my makesy package package just restocked on a few things that i really needed i ran out of these eco matte cream dust covers i can honestly probably just make these on my own they're just the like a thicker paper and they go over it's not even that thick of paper actually should i just start making these with my cricut they honestly probably make these with a cricut <laughs> anyway i put it on top of my aura candles my 2.5 ones so that it covers the tops and they don't get dusty but if you did want to get these and you don't have a cricut or you aren't interested in really doing this by yourself i've been getting these from makesy and they're pretty good they're called the eco matte cream dust covers they have other um sizes and other colors of this as well i think they have black and like a natural color well th this one is pretty natural though i think there's one that looks more like cardboard and then i did get oh oh i forgot i got this you right, guys call me crazy but i don't think i've ever gotten the iridescent candle vessels from makesy and i wanted to try them maybe i have gotten like a sample or something but i barely remember this white iridescent was calling my name or it's called um iridescent ivory pack of 12. i think i love it look at let's look at it in the light oh my gosh oh my gosh 
Wait, what? This might be the prettiest thing I've ever seen in my life. They have this in the 12 ounce size too. I wonder if they have it in the eight ounce size though. Either way, I'm using this, obviously. <laughs> what do I use it for though? Who cares? It's gonna be beautiful. So I got a 12 pack of this. They come in a 12 pack. And then just some boring stuff. I got more wicks, the Crackling Booster wicks, 0.04. I usually get a quantity of 100, um, depending on like how many I need. And the width is 0.375, which is perfect for the 2.5 ounce R jars. I know a lot of people ask about the sizing of wicks. I should maybe just make a separate video on that. But for the smallest Ara um, vessels, which have a diameter of, I think, two inches, these are the best ones. And the height, I get five inches so that I um, actually put a wick in one of those small containers and then I cut it off. And then the top half that gets cut off, I use again for another candle. So... I think I actually save money by getting the bigger ones, but I could be wrong. And Wax Companion, it's best for 100% soy wax, which is what I use. So that's why these work best for me. And then I have the flat wick clips, which are just the clips that go on the bottom of the candle so that the wick stays up. And that's it for Makesy. Uh, that's actually it in general. I did order a few things. I ordered a soap making kit from Brambleberry because I want to make my friends soap for a little like Valentine's Day care package that I'm doing for them. And also I want to like dabble in soap making because I think that could be fun. And then I also ordered every single trial from Candle Science of their spring and summer collection that they just dropped. I want to try all of them. Yeah, so many things, honestly. But I haven't been ordering anything for my small business throughout like November to now basically because that's like kind of when I take my break but it feels good to get back into it. It's just strange because I won't be doing pop-ups for another few months because of just like saving more time for preparing for my wedding and also it's the colder months right now. Um, So I'm going to be sitting on a good amount of inventory unless if I can get my online sales up which I would love to do and I do have some like goals that I'm trying to reach with like online sales and some like um, steps that I'm trying to follow to get there. I want to be more active on social media so I think the next step right now since I don't really want to craft at the moment which is like wild because I always want to craft. I think the next step right now is to prioritize posting on social media because I love crafting obviously I always want to be crafting but I'm like taking all this content and like recording all these videos and taking all these pictures but I'm never like posting any of it because I just don't enjoy that kind of stuff as much as like making the stuff. I'm gonna sit down for a little bit and make a bunch of social media posts like bulk create like a bunch of things so that I could post it over the next week and then maybe get into the habit of posting every single day because that's kind of what I want to do. Also have very exciting announcement let me like go sit over there and tell you. So I promised I would do this in January, but I didn't do it in January. So now I'm adjusting that promise to get it done in February, which is creating a take back program for my candles and potentially even a recycling program for other products that I have at my shop that I have sold. But basically I'm trying to incorporate more sustainable practices in my business. And one thing that a lot of people have suggested and have asked for and that I think is a great idea is a candle take back program where after a candle has fully burnt out, people can return the vessel and can either get it refilled with a different fragrance or the same fragrance or just like give me back the vessel and they get some sort of store credit or like there's some sort of perk associated with them giving the vessel back to me. I've kind of concluded that in order to make this like beneficial for both parties, <laughs> it's going to be difficult to do this with people who are shipping the vessels back to me because someone's going to need to pay for shipping and I think it should be me unless if they are willing to pay like whatever it is ten dollars shipping but then what's the incentive of them like returning back the vessel I would need to give them something in return and I think what I'm leaning towards at least for shipping returns is they pay ten dollars for shipping I'm making that number up it could be whatever the shipping cost is they pack up the candle vessel, they send it back to me. When I receive it and I look at the vessel and it looks good and it looks good enough where I can reuse it, then they'll get a $10 store credit to my shop. That has to be used within 30 days. Hmm? That kind of works. And if it's not usable, like there are cracks or like there's damage or something like that, then they will still get credit to my store, but like maybe in the form of a discount, like they'll get 
20% off their next order or something of that sort. I think that could work. Let me know your thoughts. If you do any sort of program like this or you have thoughts on like as a customer how you would react to something like that. Oh, also in person, if you wanted to give back the vessel, I think that would be a lot simpler. Every time I do a pop-up in person, you can just give it back to me for free and I'll give you a coupon for 20% off my store that expires in like 30 days or something. I like adding that like expires detail because that really encourages people to like go on to my store the next day or like soon after and purchase something. But what do you guys think? I actually want to make a social media post about that. So right now I'm gonna go onto Kittle and make a post because I'm having trouble like coming up with exactly what I want it to look like. And Kittle is really awesome. I've talked about them before, but they're great because they have an AI feature where I type in like the exact thing that I kind of want or like some sort of version of what's going on in my head and they'll create an image for it or an entire post. Um, and it's really great when I'm in some sort of like creative rut. So I'm gonna go out to Kittle and do that. Literally all I did was type in candle doodle and then made the type of image that I want, like a line art doodle. And Kittle AI just came up with this image. Um, that helps <laughs> like a lot because I am not like the most artsy artistic person when it comes to illustrations. And I'm working on that. But while I like learn more <laughs> and get better at that, why not use this really cool tool to help me like get 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 into it you know what i mean so i am going to use this candle maybe instead of this so let's make this color let's make this candle this color i'll remove this oh my gosh wait that's kind of perfect what the heck um Oh my god, wait, do I love this? <laughs> that was so easy. Let me show you one that I actually made the other day, though. Everything auto-saves, by the way, so we're cool to, to leave this, this situation. But the other day, I made this, and I was so mad that it wasn't screen recording, but I literally typed in that same exact thing, like, candle doodle, and this is what came up. It's, like, an entirely different vibe. Like, if you didn't like what kittle ai came up with you can just run the generator again and it'll come up with something entirely different so this is what it came up with and i'm obsessed and also this template is from kittle so i i didn't have to do anything i just had to type in my own words that i wanted to be there so i put introducing the take back program a circular solution to candle waste i love that and then just my at here and then on the next page i could put the details i'm thinking like the gears are turning, you know what I mean? Let me back up. Kittle is your one-stop shop design studio. It has everything you would ever need to create graphics, text, social media posts, mock-ups, anything you would think of when it comes to design, Kittle can definitely help you with. On top of having a whole bunch of templates to work from, from cards, menus, posters, Instagram posts, Facebook posts, a whole bunch of graphics, including clip art, graphics, illustrations, actual photos and images. They have a massive library of fonts and different pre-made settings. But of all of Kittle's assets, my favorite one is the Kittle AI tool. As you can see, I use it quite frequently, especially when I'm in a creative rut and I kind of know the gist of what I want, but I can't really implement it myself, whether it be because of a creative block or maybe I just don't have the skills yet, or maybe I'm not fully sure of exactly what I want and I just want to see what AI can come up with. I'm currently using it to make a whole bunch of social media posts, but in the past I've also used it to make mock-ups. For example, when I was dabbling in creating apparel, which I am going to do again 
in this video. I would come up with a whole bunch of designs, create it in Kittle, and then I can actually mock up those designs on any sort of product. So if I was thinking of a t-shirt, I could mock up a design on a t-shirt. If I was thinking a mug, I could put on a mug. The list is endless of the amount of products you can show and mock up your design on. And that just helps because you don't have to order a physical product. You can just see it on your screen and it looks so realistic. It saves you so much time and money. Everything is very seamless. It's so easy to use Kittle. I didn't have to go through any sort of like tutorial or follow any instructions. I literally just logged into Kittle.com and it was so intuitive right after I got on the site. But if you are interested in tutorials, they do have a YouTube channel with a whole bunch of step-by-step -step tutorials that you can follow. In fact, I should probably go through those as well because I bet there are a bunch of features that I'm actually missing out on because I kind of just explore however the heck I want to. <laughs> I was definitely really tired of using a whole bunch of different platforms to create different designs. I wanted all of my designs to be created and processed and stored in one place. So Kittle is that place for me. Even when it comes to designing digital products that I'm really excited to share with you eventually. <laughs> Journals, calendars, even bookmarks, like random paper goods like that you can design on Kittle. Labels, stickers, shipping tape, like you, you name it guys. So if you are a small business owner like myself or a creative person or just an artsy person who likes to make cards and random things and gifts for your friends, I feel like everyone can find some sort of cool use of Kittle. If you do want to try it, you can use the link in my description. You can try it out for free, completely for free. I find myself scrolling on the templates similar to how I scroll on Pinterest, just like endlessly. I know you're going to find such great uses out of it. So check them out. Link is in my description try them for free. Let me know what you think. <laughs> and thank you, Kittle, for sponsoring this video. Bear with me, guys. I know I've been talking for this whole video so far. Who knows how long it's been, but I did get this in the mail and I think they're exciting. They're cute little bows. Now, this is why I envision. Don't hate me, okay? Um, I want to do pouches again with these. Okay, I know this is very Valentine's Day, and I know this is not going to be released on my site by Valentine's Day, unless if I rush, and I do it today, literally. But imagine this as a pouch with a little ribbon on it. I'm going to do it. I, I'm going to do it. It's going to be a year-round thing. I know it. And see, this is me being optimistic, like overly optimistic. But I think it would be so cute. And I think it would do well at pop-up shops. That being said, I also got other colors. <laughs> these are white ones. I know I can easily make these myself, but I wanted them pre-made so I'd stop giving myself an excuse. Um, and they're just pre-made. So I have <laughs> pink ones as well. These are all from Amazon. I will link them, of course, for you guys. And then last but not least, these clips, which are cold. Ooh, must be kind of cold outside. But basically, these are clips that go in your hair like this. Couldn't you see it? And I made this bow in a previous vlog. I was thinking, instead of freaking figuring out the bobby pins every time, you just have a clip. Okay, okay, you convinced me. I'm selling these bows. I am, They're, they are going to be sold. All right, the amount of things on my to-do list right now is absolutely wild.
All right, guys, it's the next day. I am wearing the same exact thing for continuity purposes because I'm actually filming another video while I'm doing this one. But I just did these pillar candles. I made a whole bunch of the bears. And basically, I have like the chubby bear and then <laughs> the other cute bear. Um, I have two of each of those. And then I also have the cherub, which is that one right there, the little angel. I've already made all of these before, but obviously this one needs to be remade. So when I post it, it doesn't have an ear cut off. I need to remelt this one. And then I've actually also seen people paint black, um, like use black paint to paint in the nose and the eyes. Would that be better or should I keep it like this? What, what would you like? I'll put a picture of what it looks like with the black eyes and nose. I don't know what to do, but that's going great. Up next on the agenda, I want to make this pouch. I'm in like a teddy bear vibe <laughs> right now. And then I also want to add in like a little ribbon. That'd be so cute. Also for my wax warmer, I've been using this two auto heat warmer. It's like a mini size and it's perfect for just like the little bit of wax I need for my pillar candles since I don't make too much of it. This is like a really good size and it drains from the middle. So I never have to like tip it over like this because it, it doesn't drain from here. It drains from the middle, which is great. So I really like this. I link all of the stuff I use in the description, by the way, if you're ever interested. Um, but yeah. Let's move on to pouches. By the way, I am holding off on doing the container candles, the cereal and the other fragrance that I wanna do because I'm waiting on those trials from Candle Science still. Also, I'm using a different lens. It makes me look like I'm much closer, um, <laughs> but I kinda like the way this focuses and I wanted some like really close up shots on, of some of my stuff. So I changed this one and I kinda like it. I don't know. Let me know if you like this or the wider lens. reason I have such a difficult time with pouches is because of the lining I used to use. I would use um, polyester satin and it's so slippery. I did get my walking foot attached to my sewing machine so I'm going to try that out today and that should help but now I'm going to try this like canvas. It's like a sustainable um, canvas or something from Mood Fabrics. It's just like leftover basically scrap fabric but it matches the teddy fabric pretty well kind of matches like the teddy bear so i'm going to try this fabric instead it's also thicker so it should make the pouch thicker rather than have it just collapse um and then i'm also going to use this thinner interfacing that i have or batting rather than the really thick one that i have because that thick one was just like not working out for my sewing machine i need like an industrial sewing machine so badly <laughs> um and i think once i have one of those I'll go back to using the really thick batting, but for my little brother machine right here, I'm just gonna stick with this one. gonna come out so cute i'm very excited <laughs> guys i've been so talkative lately i just like could not 
I thought I saw something. I cannot get enough of speaking in these vlogs. I think it's because I've been watching a lot more small business owners doing vlogs and I really enjoy them and they talk a lot. <clears throat> they talk through like the process while they're doing crafts, like they're talking like normally. I would be adding in these lines for the quilting in silence or I would turn on music or something, but I'm like in the mood to talk, which is wild for me. If you're an introvert, you know how crazy this is. I'm gonna try to get these pouches out. I can already tell they're gonna be amazing. Whether or not I'll cry while I make these because of my ongoing struggle with making the pouches is, you know, up in the air. But um, I'm hoping that I don't cry and that I've gone through all of the measures to make sure that I'm able to do this successfully without hitting my life. I'm just using chalk to draw on the lines. It's white chalk, but it's kind of making a dent in the quilting and the fabric. So I'm like following the dent as I sew. And then also it is like getting some of the chalk on the fabric. I don't like using those water soluble pens because then you have to like get it wet in order to get the marks off. And I didn't really enjoy that process last time I did it. So I'd rather use the chalk and then you can just like pat it off. My pillar candles are setting beautifully and I'm really happy with them so far. I mean, I haven't unmolded them and I'm using all my willpower ever to not unmold them immediately because you're supposed to wait a good amount of time. But I didn't last time and that's why the ear came off of that one bear um, because I was impatient. So I'm trying not to do that this time. It helps that I have a lot of other crafts to do. All right, now, Let's quilt. Using a walking foot for the first time. Hopefully this works and also, I'll show. Also, I need to change my thread. This is going to be the longest, chattiest vlog I've ever posted in my entire life. If 2019 me could see me now, she'd be shook. She'd be like, Monica, shut up. Anyway, in my last vlog, I was raving about Archery Corner, who I found on YouTube recently, and we ended up DMing each other uh, because we really are very similar in our small business, like, lives and aspirations and, like, the point we're both at, like, with our small businesses. We're also both planning weddings, which is, like, funny. One sec while this pot in lines. Yeah, I love how much... Should I not talk over this? I should not talk over this. Yeah, I love how much she talks in her vlogs. I just feel so entertained. So maybe that's also partially where this is coming from. Oh, and I also watch Coco Natasha. Coco Natasha, I think, is her username. She's also very chatty, which I love. And she does a lots of, like, handmade goods. Quit talking and do the thing. Okay, that looks pretty good. Definitely not as puffy as my other batting, but I think this will do for now. I should also change my needle.
were a few issues with making this that I always run into and it might be a little lopsided, but let's take a look at how it came out. It's all done except for the red ribbon that I want to put on the um, front next to my logo. And then I also have to close up this inner hole that I'm using to like turn this right side out. I found other ways to make this pouch that includes like bias tape and like a few other things, but I feel like turning it inside out is like the easiest method. Oh, I also changed like how poofy I make it with the um, corners. So let's see. Okay, the corners are way too pointy. <laughs> what the heck? How did that happen? I totally messed up the cornering. Yeah, what the heck is that, guys? <laughs> That's embarrassing. But otherwise, it's really cute. It's just pointy. What the heck? Mm, okay, I'm gonna fix that. That's like the weirdest thing. What the heck? All right, that was the weirdest thing. I fixed it. Um, Literally could not tell you when, why, or how that happened. I mean, I know how it happened. I just don't know like how anyway i made it taller and poofier instead of like more wide and short i feel like this is a better look and ugh, spare threads everywhere now for the final touch normally I have the monica's logo up here now i'm thinking you know just spice it up a little bit you know huh I think above would be good. I will have to hand sew this though, because I think that's how you put these things on. I love it. I'm gonna make the rest of those pouches probably tomorrow. I don't like actually wanna go through making all of them because that would be a good amount. And we know how unmotivated I get when <laughs> I work on pouches for too long. So I'm happy with the way that one turned out. I like the shape of it. I like the little ribbon. I think I'm gonna add the pink ribbons and the white ribbons on the other ones but I think this is nice. And I'm gonna call this like the medium size or, or large or regular, I'm not sure. Maybe like just the regular size. And then I'm going to have a mini one. So I cut out one that's three inches smaller in each dimension. And I'm also gonna make that one. As for scrunchies, I already actually made a good amount of pink ones. So I have this really light pink one and then like a medium violet pink almost, magenta. Um, I need to get more fabric for scrunchies. This is all I have. So that's all I can really make right now. I have a few other colors that are satiny, but I just want to get some updated fabric for scrunchies. spent the last work block of today cutting out the pattern pieces or the lining pieces of this valentine's day dress that i really want to make i have a ton of pieces it's like a corset with like a lot of different panels <laughs> and i think it's going to come out really good but it's a slow process to end off this um first part of making my first collection of 2024 vlog because this is going to be split into multiple parts because a lot is going on and it's taking some time so i think i'll do multiple segments in this little series by the way i'm just having strawberries and nutella but the last thing i want to do is unmold these because they've been sitting for a good amount of time and now i can unmold them such a satisfying process and i think i'll leave honestly let me leave the ones that i think will look really good um for me to unbox with my phone in the natural sunlight so that I can post a little TikTok about it. I mean, I think these all will come out good, but I can already tell there are like holes in this one. So messed up with that, but it's a learning process. All right, this is the one that I think was messed up before. So I gotta be careful. I should also cut my nails because sometimes my nails like nick these or I should just wear gloves or something. All right, so far so good. It's just easier to do it like down here. Sorry, you can't see. Okay, 
It's good. <laughs> oh no, it cracked. <gasps> That's my bad. I should not have done that. That's the saddest thing I've ever seen. I should I should be doing this on a table. Okay, well, let's try another one. We will try this one. I'm gonna do this one fully on the ground so that I don't drop it again. Oh my gosh, that was devastating. Okay. Okay. This one's perfect. Did not drop it, but the little wick comes out at the top. So smooth, no bubbles. This wax is so good. I'm gonna link it below. It's my favorite one, my favorite brand as well for all sorts of wax, soy wax specifically. So at the top, I just tie this off and I'm gonna do a product photography of this guy. Oh, cute. Oh, I'm so sad about this one. Really upsetting. Okay, what else? What else can I do? Maybe I'll do this one. Yeah, so then I'll leave two of the bears and the one cherub for TikTok tomorrow. This bear is so much easier to unmold. I'm still gonna do it on the ground though because it made me nervous. This one's a lot easier. Oh, it feels so smooth. I love it. I love this wax so much. Like literally zero imperfections. I feel like I will color in the eyes and the nose. Maybe I'll try it on the one that's broken and see how it looks. And then we can make some sort of, we can come to a consensus us together. Put in the comments what you think I should do. Coloring the nose and eyes black or not. There will be a lot more candle making in the next segment of this series that I've now just spontaneously decided is going to be a series because I really want to make those two new candles for the new nostalgia collection. And then I'm thinking of one more like Valentine's Day themed one. It's already February 2nd. I posted on my Instagram story for my brand asking if I should do a Valentine's Day collection or just focus on a springtime collection, most people said drop the Valentine's Day stuff. So I think I'll drop the pouch because I think I got a handle on it. Honestly, I think I can do it. I'll drop those two pink scrunchies. Maybe try to get my hands on a few more fabrics for scrunchies. I'll drop the two bear candles. I'll restock the cherub candles and then that'll be it for the Valentine. Oh wait, and the ribbon. The ribbon with the little like clip that goes in the back. I think I'll drop all of those things. Maybe I'll do product photography for it tomorrow. Drop it like on Wednesday. Oh my gosh, it's like the quickest thing ever. And then I'll really truly focus on the container candles and other pouches, other totes, apparel perhaps, um, for some sort of like entering springtime collection in March. That sounds about right. Also, if you're following my wedding dress making saga, it is coming along just fine. I've basically finished the top. I need to make a skirt pattern, but it's gonna be super basic. It's gonna be literally just a circle skirt and I need to cut out a train. So I need to figure out how to do that. I've watched a bunch of YouTube tutorials. You just extend the pattern a little bit out and then low key, I'm trying to do a reception dress. It's a secret though, because I don't want too many people to know because I literally, don't know if I can pull it off. I thrifted a wedding dress back sometime last year, literally right after I got engaged, or maybe it was even before I got engaged. <laughs> I don't remember, but I found this beautiful dress at my local thrift store. It was $10 or something ridiculous like that. It had a bunch of stains, like burn stains, as in someone like accidentally took a lighter and like lit it on fire a little bit every every so often like you'd find a burn stain <laughs> kind of random so i need to completely deconstruct the dress in order to cut around the stains but it's relatively my size it's like a vintage satin material definitely not as nice as the satin i'm using for my actual dress but i kind of want to do something with that so that's what's that's what's going on right now guys if you want to stay more up to date <laughs> with me my business and everything else going on you can follow me on instagram i post a lot there and i'm trying to do more tiktok so thank you so much for watching this video i will see you guys in the next one bye